On August 8, 1994, in Hammond, Indiana, Debbie Crozier was spending the afternoon with her fiancé's father, Wayne Edmonds, and her two young children. But as they discovered, it's risky to take for granted that the people who are in our lives today will be there tomorrow. If you can't, I will. You know. Well, I, you know, I hope because I, I just hate waiting and then I don't know if it's going to get the kids to better. You want to be there. All right, guys. Heather and Matthew, you know, said they were thirsty and stuff, so I went in there and got him each a pop and bought, you know, I bought him some candy. We got pops Hi, with a circle foot, and you dip it in pops, then lick it, and it pops all over your mouth. Then I had the push ups, then I had a sucker. Thanks. A note on the window said they were hiring them for a second. Matthew, he's my fishing buddy. And Heather, she gets to be honoring one once in a while. But she's, she's a good kid. No, I already paid for once. These kids mean a lot to us. Cindy Barnes was driving a friend to the store. Scotty had said to me, look out, there's two kids playing there, you know, stay a little bit farther back. See, that's good. That, that's why you can't play that close. She's eating those orange sherbet push-ups. And uh, she had it all over her face. And uh, I thought she was really cute. David Bell happened to be on his way to run an errand at the same mini mall. This truck was in front of me and was moving along, stopping, going, stopping. I remember saying to myself, you're not driving an 18 volt Come on, just so easy, simple, you know, left turn, forward, park, and stop, and, you know. As she turned and cleared from me, I just zoomed right past her. I was watching the truck. And then all of a sudden, she just lunged forward. I knew that the little girl was hit. I, I didn't want to look. I really didn't want to look. I didn't know what was going on. But I panicked right away because I said, my God, my kids are outside. My baby! I couldn't believe it. The truck was on top of her, and she couldn't move. And I screamed, I said, oh, my God. I, I got angry. I got mad, upset, because I said, how could this happen? What the hell are you doing? What's going on? My fiancé's father wouldn't let me look at Heather. The way I saw that truck go over her, I didn't think there was going to be too much left of her. And I'm fighting him, letting me go. You know, I said, please, I want to see her. I want to see her. I need an ambulance and a, um, something to Grand Food Mart, 650 Calumet Avenue. What's the problem? Uh, a truck ran through the window and there's a little kid under the truck. There's a little kid under the truck? Right. Is the truck on top of the child? The truck is through the window and there's a child underneath the truck. That's all I know. Well, I'm screaming for Jack and I saw the little girl turning purple. I was I wanted to cry, I wanted to, I just, oh man, um, it gets me every single time, like, now. Call for ambulance three, engine four. Hammond dispatcher Jackie Wheeler sent rescue units to the scene as she continued to talk to store manager Karen Guzman. Okay, how old is the child? I don't know. It's like, I can't believe this is happening in front of my face. You just got scared, way down inside. I could hear in the background the mother screaming and that's one of the mo most terrible things you can hear is a parent, a mother, father screaming for their child. Mechanic Adron Mallard heard the crash from across the street. When I looked down at the child, the child was blue in color and I told this man that we don't have time for a jack, we've got to get this truck off this child now. And he said, what do we do? And I said, let's pick it up, let's lift the truck. I looked at him dead in the eyes. I said, let's do it. Okay, let's do it. Get that team out the way. I took that anger, 
the emotions that, that was all going within me. I just took it out on that truck. Get the baby out! Get her out! Store clerk Pat Stepp heard their screams for help. Nobody wanted to go under the truck. Everybody, I think, was in shock. Thought Heather had died. And I couldn't see that truck going back down on top of her again. Get the baby out! Come on! Can't hold it up too much! Sorry. And then I seen her move. I couldn't believe it. She was alive. Get the baby! Come on, somebody, please! This man told me at one point, I'm losing my grip. I'm losing my grip. Get the baby out! Uh, and I said, we cannot let it back down. So we embraced each other. We was like, oh man, thank God. It was a good job, you know. When I was carrying her out, she sat up and hugged me. Best hug I ever had in my life. Definitely. I'm holding Heather in my arms, just like you would a little baby. That's really hard for me. Her face was all swollen. She had pieces of glass all over her. She was real dirty. I said, I'm trained in first aid. Please put her down on the ground. I said, if she's got a spine or neck injury, you could do more damage by cradling her. Heather, you're be all right. I've never seen anything like it before in my life, and I hope to never see it again. Seven-year-old Heather Johnson and her five-year-old brother Matthew were taken to St. Margaret Mercy Health Care Centers. All right. Heather! Okay, Heather, hold okay. still. We're going to okay. bring your brother in here. Okay. Are you cold? Give the I wanted to see my sister, because I want to see if she was okay. Let's roll sure. him and roll her. How are you doing? Good, how are you? Her eyes were purple. Yeah. And her whole face was purple. Yeah. All right, let's get him down the x ray now, okay? Yeah. All right. If we're looking like she's hurt, I was scared. I don't know if she was scared. While Matthew suffered a fractured collarbone in the accident, Amazingly, Heather only suffered three fractured ribs and a broken ankle. I hoped I wouldn't die if the truck was on like about five more minutes, I would have passed away. It's hurt. It's choking me a little bit. In the six weeks that have passed, both children have completely recovered from the accident. Thanks. Thank you. I did fear for her life. Isn't that better? There's no way that I think that uh, this gentleman and myself could ever have done something like this if it wasn't for this little girl's life being feared. I don't know that it could be done again if it were the same situation. I want to thank him and give him a hug. Thank you very much. And just tell him I thank him very much for saving my child's life. Yeah, me too. <laughs> the family and David Bell have become close. David just happened to be in the right place at the right time. God gave him the strength to lift up that truck and get my daughter out. Because if it wasn't for him, it's the honest truth, I would have lost her. He was a guardian angel. It was like he was meant to be there for some reason. <laughs> Heather, who I call my girl, said about the driver of the pickup truck. I know she didn't mean to hit me, you know, on purpose. And it really touched me. I said, she, you know, this girl can grow up to be someone. It's like God gave her a second chance. Hey, you gotta get yeah. Yeah. Dave, but I was the hero. We're like very close friends, you know. But he's part of my family now. Let's all jump on I love David Bell with all my heart, and he will always be welcoming my family. Next.
911, police on fire. This young woman arrives home. The hallway's not lit. It's very dark. The house, she thinks, is empty. Oh, my God. 